Worried about gout? Check out Ural, the effective urinary alkalinizer. Ural, neutralize your uric acid problem now. Welcome to Kidney News, I'm your host Prasad. Muhyiddin Yassin and Najib Abdul Razak have not only been exchanging blows in Johor as they campaign for their respective parties, Muhyiddin has taken the battle to parliament where he accused his former boss of misleading the house. Bursatu chief Muhyiddin Yassin has accused Najib Abdul Razak of tarnishing parliament by saying not a single cent of public funds were used by the government to repay 1MDB debts. Yang Mohamad Menteri Kewangan pada bulan Januari yang lalu juga turut memaklumkan bahawa kerajaan sudah membayar hutang 1MDB berjumlah 13.3 bilion setakat ini. Maknanya ini duit rakyatlah. Muhyiddin also reminded Najib that 1MDB debts are guaranteed by the government. Dewan Yang Mulia ini telah dicemarkan oleh kenyataan yang Mohamad Khan berkenaan hutang One Malaysia Development Berhad 1MDB. Beliau mendakwa hutang tersebut tidak dibayar menggunakan wang rakyat. Dan inilah suatu kenyataan yang tidak benar dan mengelirukan ahli-ahli yang berhormat. Saya heran yang berhormat pekan sebagai bekas Perdana Menteri dan Menteri Keuangan boleh terlupa bahawa hutang-hutang 1MDB adalah dijamin oleh kerajaan. Apabila 1MDB gagal membayar hutang-hutang termasuk faedah yang keseruhannya berjumlah lebih RM50 bilion, ringgit, maka kerajaanlah yang terpaksa membayar hutang-hutang ini. Najib previously argued in the Dewan Rakyat that the amount was not paid by public funds. He said 1MDB money that was returned to Malaysia from various entities such as Goldman Sachs, audit firms KPMG and Deloitte, and Bank and the US Department of Justice were used instead. Adalah tidak betul untuk mencanangkan bahawa rakyat perlu membayar atau menanggung hutang 1MDB. Misalnya, bayaran sebanyak 16.4 bilion yang diterima dari Goldman Sachs bukanlah dari wang rakyat. The government has been giving out gifts worth millions of ringgit to former prime ministers, according to Dr. Mathur Muhammad, but he says he isn't one of them. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Muhammad told Parliament today that the current government does not respect the constitution or the country's laws. He said those in power appear to be doing as they please. Walaupun maklumat tidak diberi, tidak ada perbahasan dalam Dewan, tetapi Nilai hadiah yang diberi kepada Perdana Menteri yang kelima ialah sebanyak 70 juta ringgit. Ini juga tidak ada dalam undang-undang dan kerajaan bertindak seolah-olah kerajaan boleh buat apa saja keputusan dan keputusan itu tidak boleh dipertikai uh, oleh rakyat. Ini adalah sesuatu cara yang tidak baik kerana negara perlu mematuhi kepada undang-undang. Mahathir claimed properties gifted to former Prime Ministers Najib Abdul Razak and Abdullah Ahmad Badawi were worth 100 million ringgit and 70 million ringgit respectively. Saya mengaku saya saya juga bekas Perdana Menteri tapi saya tak ambil satu sen pun daripada hadiah uh, kepada saya. Mungkin kerana jasa saya itu tak ada, tak cukup nak dapat hadiah. Tapi saya mengaku ada tawaran nak beri kepada saya sekeping tanah. Saya tolak dan saya sebaliknya menawar untuk membeli tanah, bukan mendapat percuma. Mahathir first brought up the matter of Najib's request for a 100 million ringgit piece of land last November. At the time, it was revealed that the cabinet had agreed in principle to grant Najib the land. However, Najib decided to withdraw his request before the cabinet's decision was announced. The fight between MC and DAP heats up in Johor, with Theo Ni Ching mocking Wee Ka Siong's political drama, which triggered an MCA leader to lodge a report against her. A Johor MCA leader has lodged a police report against Kulai MP Theo Ni Ching. This is after the DAP lawmaker mocked MCA President Wee Ka Siong. 
This was over an aborted debate between MCA and DAP, which Teo had described as being self-written, directed, and acted by we. We had on February 25th challenged Teo to a debate on Chinese education issues, which she promptly accepted. However, the MCA president later said he wanted to debate with DAP Secretary General Lim Guan Eng instead. MCA later announced the event won't proceed as it failed to secure police approval. Nevertheless, Teo turned up at the debate venue yesterday, during which DAP members and supporters unfurled banners mocking we outside the empty hall. Teo claimed we never intended to debate to begin with when he issued the challenge. She added that we was deserving of the best screenplay awards at the Oscars. Teo's comments were reported in the Chinese press, which Pasir Gudang MCA Public Complaints and Services Bureau Deputy Chief Ang Tun Chek used to lodge a police report against Tio. Continuous rain has brought water levels up in several parts of the Klang Valley, including the heart of Kuala Lumpur. Parts of Kuala Lumpur have been struck by flash floods. They include Kuchai Lama, Pudu and Bukit Jalil. The National Disaster Management Agency has reportedly confirmed this. Internet users have taken to social media to share pictures of flooded highways with pedestrians seen climbing on top of their cars to escape the water. The new Pantai Expressway has also shut the Kuchai Tunnel as of 4.20 p.m. It has requested highway users to find alternative routes. The Malaysian Meteorological Department issued a warning yesterday of possible flash floods in Petaling Jaya, Klang and Shah Alam. Police have begun investigating the suspected poisoning of stray cats in Terengganu. What should have been a relaxing day at the Pantai Boke Keluang Resort in Basut, Terengganu, turned into a nightmare for Badrul Hafizi Ali. The Sultan Zainal Abidin University employees stumbled upon 20 cat carcasses on the beach. The cats were believed to have been poisoned. Speaking to Bernama, he said he recognized all the stray cats and they were friendly because he fed them whenever he had the time. A video clip on the discovery of the cat carcasses received various reactions from netizens who were sad and disappointed over the incident. Badrul said he felt sad, shocked and angry with the attitude of the people who carried out this despicable act. Badrul also lodged a police report at the Kampong Raja police station yesterday afternoon and hoped that those responsible would receive appropriate punishment. Terengganu State Veterinary Services Department Head Dr. Anun Man confirmed receiving a report on the matter and that further investigation will be carried out. If you're wondering why the Health Ministry has not acted against MPs who held secret meetings during the total lockdown, it's because no one lodged a report. The Health Ministry did not take action against three meetings held by government MPs during the total lockdown period because no complaints were filed. In a written parliamentary reply, the Health Ministry said, therefore, it cannot be ascertained if there are any breaches of COVID-19 protocols. The question was asked by Kapong MP Lim Lip Eng. At the time, the Klang Valley was under total lockdown since June 1st, which put a ban on in-person meetings. Inspector General of Police Akril Sani Abdullah Sani even issued a warning on July 6, 2021. The emergency was also in place, which allowed for fines of up to 10,000 ringgit for COVID-19 protocol breaches. During that period, a small group of AMNO MPs, including AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, were working to oust Muhyiddin Yassin as Prime Minister. Malaysia Kini reported on the first meeting of MPs at Jalan Bellamy. This was corroborated by Johor Bahru AMNO Division Chief Shahrir Samad. Meanwhile, numerous media organizations reported on the meeting of BN MPs at Wisma Perwira on July 5th while the August 1st meeting has been corroborated by multiple sources. I'd like to thank the team at GSC for not pausing and restarting Batman 40 minutes into the movie when I watched it last week. Meanwhile, TGV has clarified the cause of their movie restart. Cinema chain TGV Cinemas has confirmed that the reason a screening of the Batman was restarted was due to technical issues and not the late arrival of VIPs. 
This happened after one of its outlets in Kuching, Sarawak, restarted the movie that had already played for 45 minutes. In a statement on Facebook, TGV said it had carried out a thorough investigation of the incident that happened at the 7.15 p.m. screening on Saturday in TGV Viva City. It said the session delays were caused due to a technical issue at its IMAX hall and not due to late arrivals of VIPs as reported by some media. TGV added that the technical issue was actually fixed on time, but due to miscommunications, some staff at the entrance presumed the 7.15 p.m. show would also be delayed. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.